When we use a recipe to make something, we do so for a certain number of people or a certain number of items. In this case, when we're making scones, this recipe is making 18 scones. But what if we wanted to change the recipe so we're making it for more people or we wanted to make more scones? So what we need to do is change all the ingredients in the same proportion. So what that means is if we double the number of scones, we're going to double all of the ingredients shown here. So what if we want to make 50 scones? How do we change it? We know that we're going to have more of each of the items, but how much more? So what we do is we create a ratio, and that's a ratio of the old mix to the new mix, or in this case, 18 scones to 50 scones. And we're going to use that to work out our scale factor. In other words, how much everything changes. Let's look in particular at the number of cups of self-raising flour and have a think about how many cups of self-raising flour we'd use if we're producing now 50 scones. You'd think that 18 goes into 50 two and a bit times. So maybe we've got to multiply the number of cups by two and a bit, whatever that two and a bit is. So let's have a look at how we work it out accurately. What we do is we use a scale factor where it's the new mix, in this case new number of scones, divided by the old mix or the old number of scones. And you do the same if we're talking about people. It'll be the new number of people that you want to cook for divided by the old number of people. So that scale factor when we work it out is approximately 2.78. Now that's not really a nice number in terms of changing the ingredients and we'll have a look at what we do with that as we go through each of the items. So what we're going to do is multiply all of the items in our recipe by 2.78. That's our scale factor. Let's have a look what that does to all of the particular items. So we can see that the number of cups is 5.56, the number of teaspoons 0.695, etc. These aren't really nice numbers. So what we'll do is we'll round them off to one decimal place. Now even when we do that, we're looking at measurements that probably aren't things that are going to be easy to work out. So 5.6 cups is not easy because most of the markings on a container are probably to the nearest whole number or nearest a half. So in this case, what we need to do is just be very careful and say 5.6 is close to 5.5 or 5.5. It's just a little bit over, but certainly not close to 6 cups. How can we do this better? Well, usually what happens when we change the recipe, we're looking at a multiple of the number of people or close to a multiple of that particular or original number. So in the case of scones, what happens if we make the recipe for 54 scones? You can see here that each of the individual items is a much nicer number to work with. And that's because 54 is a multiple of 18. In fact, 54 divided by 18 is 3. So that means that we can change each of the items in our recipe by multiplying them by 3. It's a much easier way to work it out. So when we're changing our recipe, and let's say, for example, we've got a mixture of quantities for four people. What we could do is say, let's just change it to eight people or 12 or 16, because these are all multiple of four. In other words, four goes into them evenly or without remainder. So we can change all the ingredients by the same factor. Or perhaps what we could do is change the recipe for two, four, six, eight, ten people. The reason why that's also easy is because two is a half of four we should be able to work out the ingredients for a half as many people just by dividing them by two. So that's how we change a recipe. What we do is we work out a scale factor, which is the new number of people or the new number of items that we want divided by the old number of people or the old number of items.